It is pretty darn cool to be able to walk into a troubleshooting scenario and because we understand how a network operates and how it works, we can very quickly identify the problem and hopefully resolve it for our customer. Well, in this nugget, we're gonna pick up where we left off in the previous one and take a look at some additional application layer services and also the underlying layers that make them function. Let's jump in. And let's use our scenario here with Bob right here at computer two and Bob is accessing or wants to access a web server. Now, let's back up just a moment. When you or I or somebody else tries to access a web server from the browser, normally they're gonna type in a name, like the name of the server. Maybe it's uh, google.com or, <laughs> or whatever the website name is. And behind the scenes, when a user types in google.com, somebody, I'm talking about the computer that Bob's sitting at, that computer needs to figure out what exactly is the IP address associated with the server google.com because computers on IP networks are talking to other IP devices and so these names are just a convenience. So there needs to be some kind of a translation or a lookup for google.com to a corresponding IP address. And that's happening behind the scenes millions of times a day on computers across the world. And in the TCP IP protocol stack, there is an application layer service and that is called DNS. And that is an acronym that stands for Domain Name Service. And in effect, DNS, this Domain Name Service, what it does, it gives the ability to give it a name like google.com and get an IP address associated with that name so that our computer can then try to connect to that server based on its IP address. So in addition to web services and file services, another service that we have in the TCP IP protocol suite is the application layer service of DNS, Domain Name System. And when DNS was created, it was created to automatically use the transport protocol of UDP. So when Bob is sitting at his computer and he types in www.remoteserver.com or some other name in the browser behind the scenes, DNS is being used and DNS is going to use the transport layer protocol of user datagram protocol. Now let's also presume that this is the DNS server that Bob is going to be using behind the scenes to resolve that name into an IP address. If this server is running web services and DNS and four or five other services, if Bob makes a request over to the server, how is this server going to know, hmm, <laughs> what are you looking for, Bob? Do you want DNS services or do you want file services or web services? What do you need? A primary way of identifying the service that Bob is asking for is to use what's known as a well-known port. Sometimes that's abbreviated as WKP. And for application layer services, a lot of them have a well-known port, a transport layer port associated with them. So in the case of DNS, that request, when it goes over to the server, is not only gonna use UDP, but it's also gonna have a destination UDP port of 53. Now the only magic of memorizing a service's well-known port is to see it a few times. So at this stage of the game, it's not too important to memorize you know, DNS uses UDP port 53 as its well-known port because if we have access to a computer and we can use Google, we could find that out. We could search that very, very easily. But I wanted to share with you behind the scenes what's going on. So in Bob's request, when it's making a DNS request over to the server, it's going to include the transport layer protocol of UDP based on the application layer service being used and a destination port of 53. Another challenge is that Bob's computer could be making lots of requests. And so to keep them straight, Bob's computer is also going to include a source port, a source UDP port, when it makes that request. And you might ask, okay, well, Keith, how does Computer 2 choose a port? And it just spins a wheel. So it chooses a port that's currently not in use on this computer that's greater than 1024, and it simply starts to use that for this session. So in this example, let's say that Bob's computer spun the magic wheel and said, hey, port 58,777 isn't in use, I'll use that one. And so it'll include that in the request. So when the server receives this request, it would be going to the server on port 53, where the DNS server is listening and waiting, and it would also see it as coming from port, logically port 58777, which Bob chose to use when he made the request. And before Bob's computer sends that DNS request, he's going to have to include the IP address of the server. And to make this a little bit simplified, I'm gonna say that the server is IP address B and that Bob's computer is IP address A. So before Bob sends out the request, he's going to include in this request the destination IP address, which is this guy right here, I'll just put an arrow, 
And, he'll, and Bob will also include its own IP address as the source. And by Bob including his source address, it's sort of like a return address on an envelope. That way somebody, when they get the message or get the envelope, they can look at the return address. And if they want to respond back, they can use that return address to respond back, in this case, back to Bob. And at layer two, the data link layer, we have the MAC address information. That's the 12 digit hard coded addresses that are built into the ethernet adapters. And if the computer and the internal server are both on the same network, Bob would put his source layer two ethernet address as the source, and he would put the server's layer two ethernet address as the destination. So when Bob sends this request and is trying to resolve google.com or some other name to an IP address, when the server gets it, it'll respond back to Bob or back to computer two in this case more specifically with the answer regarding the IP address behind google.com. And then once Bob's computer has the IP address for google.com, Bob can then choose to connect to google.com or whatever website Bob's trying to reach. And if Bob is using a browser and wants to go to a web page at google.com or to another web server, he would then be using, or his computer would be using for that web request, he would be using web services. Now, in the world of IP networking at the application layer, a major protocol for web services is called HTTP. And HTTP, the acronym stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. And it is what's used quite commonly for access to web pages. So if we're going to www.anything, it's a very good chance that our computer behind the scenes is going to be using HTTP or for security, maybe HTTPS as the application layer service. For this example, we'll imagine Bob is simply going to a website that doesn't have the security involved with it and is just using HTTP. For web services using HTTP, the transport layer protocol that's built in to support HTTP is TCP, Transmission Control Protocol. And the well-known port that a web server would be listening on would be TCP port 80. So when Bob formulates this request to go to the web server, Bob's gonna use the destination port of 80, which is the web server is listening on. And then Bob is very similar to what we did with DNS. It's gonna spin the magic wheel, find a port that is currently not being used logically on Bob's computer and use that as the TCP source port. So let's imagine we use 1553. And then for the IP addresses, Bob would include the web server's IP address here, his own source address here. And if they're both on the same local network, Bob would include his local layer two address, his ethernet address here, and the server's destination layer two address there. And then all of that information as a request would be sent out, in this case, to the web server that Bob wanted to go ahead and communicate with. So let's take a moment and identify what we've reinforced and discovered in this nugget. We've taken a look at two application layer services in the TCP IP protocol suite. One is DNS. Its intention is to help us discover the IP address behind a web server name like www.google.com. The transport layer protocol for DNS is UDP. The well-known port is 53. And for web services and the popular protocol HTTP as an application layer protocol or service, it uses TCP at the transport layer and it has a well-known port of TCP port 80, which means that if a web server is running, it is gonna be listening on TCP port 80 for any incoming requests. And when those requests come in, the intention is for the web server to respond back to the client to provide that service, in this example, web services that the client was after in the first place. In this video, we took a look at a couple application layer services the transport protocols they use, and their well-known ports. In the next video, we're gonna answer the question, can you prove that's really happening? And the answer is yes, so I'll see you in the very next nugget. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.